Hello, this is Cleantech Business Club from Brussels, from Your Electrics Award-winning Power Summit 2022. We joined top utilities in Europe to explore what game changers will be determining the world's energy landscape transformation during the clean tech and electric decade. We will also learn how utilities and clean tech leaders can work together to help accelerate the positive change towards a new world's paradigm, as together we are stronger. Our first uh, question, how do you like the event? event is fantastic. I mean, uh, after a few years to be uh, back and see people, to talk to real people is uh, fantastic. And of course, uh, we have a challenges in the world, as we know. So all the challenges are up all together and uh, good uh, brains together to uh, discuss the solutions. It's a great event. I think what we've learned in, in this event over the, the last few days is that what we put up there initially as the, the key game changers, uh, which are decarbonizing faster, electrifying all we can, um, making sure that investment uh, frameworks and markets are good, uh, reinforcing our grids and uh, engaging with customers, they continue to apply to be really uh, super important uh, game changers, but perhaps the most important one is that we need to end our energy naivety. We have been relying on an unreliable partner for a massive amount of our energy needs and uh, this has to change now and the most important game changer therefore perhaps is in our heads in a new mindset that we need to adopt and we need to adopt it now. I love it so much you know because actually I had some discussions with some leaders here and they always speak transition 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 and actually in our club we said there is no transition it's transformation and maybe it's also the feedback after this event. I think it's a good point because transition there's there's something slow and organized and managed over that it feels to me that we're, that's no longer where we are we are hitting the perfect storm and by this winter we are going to see challenges and hardship in Europe that we've not experienced before and therefore we need a different mindset one which is not you know next year or next month or whatever but year, but, um, right but here right now and therefore we need to think new I think that's a fair summary of things because now we're at a point where things are so urgent that we need to be much more transformative and, and make impact much faster than we've ever made before. You might be right, you have been thinking more about this, we are more hands-on uh, doing, uh, doing this uh, exercise, but it is uh, uh, huge, it's a re revolutionary change, mm -hmm. that's, that's for sure, however you, you call it. And, and actually, uh, it's linked to technology. Mm -hmm. It's not just doing something in a different way, but uh, using the technologies, what we don't know even uh, partly today. So. Uh, we need to engage the many new uh, technologies, a lot of R&D, uh, really the global uh, collaboration. Uh, more than this, uh, maybe this is something what any energy company is doing nowadays. We are on the way uh, leading uh, energy company to uh, engage the customers. Mm -hmm. Because we think that engaging customers is the key. Uh, you can call it uh, really like uh, something much bigger. It's a transformation that will be needed to do the transition. But the transition cannot be just for a decarbonized energy future. Mm -hmm. We are clearly finding out the transition has to be for a secure energy future. Mm -hmm. We are also finding out the transition has to be for a climate ready future. So it's a combination of we need to make the electric sector clean. Mm -hmm. We need to use electricity to create new energy vectors like hydrogen liquid ammonia to help the buildings and the industries to clean, but we need the electric grid to survive the weather of tomorrow because climate is already changing. The transition is, uh, is, is when you go from here to there, but what we are looking at is, is there, what is there. There is a decarbonized energy dependent Europe. Our world is a world of non-linearity. Technology development is a world of non-linearity. Then you have some process which goes ahead step by step and then suddenly it stops. This is what we saw uh, in the past, for example, with the development of renewable technologies, 
look at a at a, a, a drop in cost of, of, of photovoltaic panels. This has been incredible. Uh, look at what is happening now with the adoption of electrical mobility, for example. This is another, we are in the middle of another you know, linear process. The improvement of the quality and the reduction of cost on batteries, for example, which is one of the key technologies for leading the, the energy transition. There are many non-linearities. And of course, there is the external, uh, the external world, which is changing around us. I mean, four years ago, nobody would have bet on something like the pandemics, uh, the Ukraine no. crisis. So, I think that what we have to do, again, is to react faster because we need, we must be fast. We, we have to speed up the pace of change, but also don't go ahead of the mainstream, which is the, the, the process which had already been defined at European level. So the, you know, the uh, New Green Deal, the Fit for 55, the packages that Europe is trying to put forward because uh, the, that's the right direction again. And what we are discovering is that uh, uh, renewables are the solution not only, not only for the uh, climate, but also for reducing our dependency on fossil fuels imports. So, Simon, just in a few bullet points, what are the game changers during the clean tech and electric decade? Massive deployment of renewables together with digitalization of, of, of grids and electrification, that's technology, and they go together. You might not have a, uh, renewable deployment in such a massive way without a lot of digital in the networks, and you may not have uh, uh, digitalization uh, if it doesn't make any sense if you don't electrify the final uh, the final consumers that's the first one number two uh, policy making policy making means clear direction I, I believe we do have it coherent more at the European level I think we have to struggle in order to improve this point and uh, all the tools in order to accelerate the transformation the game changers uh, in the decade will be the batteries. The batteries make the green energy to be sustainable and not intermittent. Oh. The biggest problem of the, where everybody from the old guard, I call it the old guard, is criticizing the renewables, say they are intermittent. When the wind is not blowing, when the sun is not shining, you don't have energy. No, you have the battery and then you have the energy. We still need to do a lot on the regulatory basis uh, and I make a simple example. When a battery charge it pays some fees for the transmission grid. When a battery discharge, it pays additional, f again, fees to the transmission grid. And that makes charging in many European countries or batteries pretty expensive. Mm -hmm. And the IRR of the investment goes down. First game changer, certainly LCOE going down, staying down, and it's just clearly solar and wind being the cheapest source of electricity and with that also absolutely go to resource for creating green hydrogen. So I think the, the low cost uh, of generation is something we absolutely need to you know, guard, safeguard and continue to drive costs down even though uh, there are supp supply chain challenges. The other one I would say public acceptance. Yeah, we have to uh, ensure that we don't lose touch with um, with the popu with the customers with the population also those who are not customers but who who have to look at this stuff okay. yeah uh, windmills more prominently but also large scale solar plants so m designing our plants in a way that they, that they uh, are acceptable and and socially acceptable but also you know uh, aesthetically pleasing enough or provide double benefit like these sort of examples where farmers can actually see a purpose for themselves in it, lose from, from electricity. I think that's an important one. And last one, we need to have the ambition to go bold, to say we can do it, to ask investors to give us the working capital needed, uh, to tell politicians they can rely on us as a sector. Uh, Christian, uh, even you look so young, yes, but you are since six years already in the organization. and. Uh, how do you see the change of the mindset of your members during this period? I think we've all been exposed to a big change of mindset because things have continued to gain pace and the requirement for increases in pace have, have uh, continued to ramp up. We've been working with that mindset change actually since, since I started. Back then it was really about doubling down on decarbonization and now I have to acknowledge that we're really experiencing a new dimension to this where energy independence needs to come into focus. That has some short-term costs and downsides for decarbonization, but it also has extreme amount of clarity to the mission and where we need to go. It's interesting. Um, the uh, CEO of E.ON um, at one speaking arrangement uh, event said that uh, when he was younger, his father, who also worked at a utility, 
mm -hmm. said to him, enter the utility industry, it doesn't change, it's the same, you will have a job for life. Mm -hmm. And now you speak to him and you see the transformation of the industry, you see how things have to evolve, mm -hmm. things are not quite the same, right? We don't stand still, mm -hmm. the whole market has changed, the business models have to change, the way we operate has to change. So I think you see a big transformation. Now that said, of course, you still see different utilities moving at different places. Mm -hmm. uh, and we need to be much more forward looking. We need to be much more aggressive with the ambitions that we have, scale up faster and take bigger risks in some of these things. Because if you don't, mm -hmm. then the risk of not doing that and making just marginal improvements is not going to be enough for us to achieve 1.5. Because there is also, um, let's say, the, all the play between different countries, but also between different utilities and those who understand the transformation quicker, they will be the winners, yes? Yes, and I think some of what you're trying to do here is to bring parties together uh, across the value chain, whether it's a utility, whether it's a developer, mm -hmm. uh, whether it's... Uh, all you the know, stakeholders. All the stakeholders, the end users, right, the manufacturers of the, the equipment. They do need to come together and aligned around a single goal. Uh, and that collaboration, I think, now is much more important than it ever was before, mm -hmm. because you also don't want to waste time on the wrong technologies. I see changes, I see a lot of change coming to Europe. I live these changes in the United States and the United States uh, utilities are ahead. We capitalize on the changes in Australia. Uh, my opinion, Australia is one of the fastest developing markets in renewables and far ahead of many other countries. What would be uh, your advice to European utilities, uh, taking into account your experience in the utility space, but also in uh, energy storage space? Consider regulations that enable new technologies to come onto the network sooner mm -hmm. than without actually constraining them. Get ready to adopt to these technologies. Get your regulations to allow for this type of thing to come into play. And uh, are you ready also you know, to support European colleagues? eventually if they need any help? The answer is yes, and, and, and there's learnings from both sides. We've got learnings here while I'm here now. We learn from what's happening here. They've got different problems in the market. We have different problems in our market, but ultimately speaking, their problems, we're going to have the same problems too. The problems we're addressing right now will have problems down the track as we start to lose more and more spinning reserve, more and more coal-fired power stations going off the network. They'll start to see the problems that we're occurring right now. Likewise, we're seeing the regulatory problems, the customer problems, the how to get networks working together and so we can learn from the European Union. Do you think that we should only focus on um, improvement of the current system or brainstorm together with the clean tech industry, with utilities, with startups, with visionary people? I think it's needed both. So if you look at solar, the innovation in solar was incremental over the last 45 years. We still have the same technology, polycrystalline, monocrystalline, photovoltaic, but look how much advancement we have made. So that's the opportunity for linear transition of a technology, but there's also an opportunity for a completely nonlinear new technology that we should collaborate with the electric utilities, with EPRI, so we can provide the startups, for example, at the Euroelectric exhibit, I saw a technology that will change the way EVs get power. Mm -hmm. Imagine trains, electric trains, they have a power line on the top mm -hmm. and there's a thing that connects the train to the power line. So it's continuously getting charged. Mm -hmm. There was a startup company here that's working on put the power line with the road. Yes, yes. Put My some brushes, carbon brushes, so if a yes. bus is going 400 kilometer, the road is the charging mechanism. Should we have spare batteries and should we configure a car so a car goes to a place, you change the battery and you bring in a new battery like Neil. in five, absolutely. So we are seeing an explosion in the startup community. The clean tech funds that has gone on hydrogen, solar, wind, the entire, in the last 12 months was more than in the last six years. So. I think clean so you tech, are a fan of the startups, yeah? Absolutely. The clean technology will be instrumental for what we are calling a climate-ready power system. So what is a climate-ready power system? A, the power system is producing clean electricity, mm -hmm. whether it's wind or solar or nuclear or even carbon capture in some places. It's a power system that has the sufficient capacity so that we can electrify other sectors and we can create new molecules 
energy vectors, hydrogen, liquid ammonia, from electricity to clean the sectors that are hard to electrify. Yeah. And a power sector that can withstand the climate of the future because if you saw the IPCC report that came out six months ago, we are already seeing precipitation, drought, heat wave, wind speed, wildfire, it's changing. I think the biggest aha moment for clean tech should be this power system was built on a design basis of the weather of the past. Mm -hmm. We need to evolve to the weather of the future. So maybe adaptation on how the electric grid adapt to a new climate could be the next innovation that clean tech. So clean tech needs to be broader, broader than just clean technology. Mm -hmm. It's clean technology, it's a resilient technology, it's technologies that are helping the electric sector to clean other sectors. So actually, it's like a new paradigm. It is an absolutely new paradigm. We actually have uh, been participating a lot in some of the Euroelectric programs. Euroelectric has a program specifically on 24-7 clean energy. And 24-7 clean energy is a new way of buying clean energy that more and more companies like Google and Microsoft are adopting as a way to drive real impact and accelerate the shift to carbon-free energy. And uh, our company, Granula, is a startup that's providing tools and services uh, to make this change happen faster and for it to go widespread across the whole electricity industry. It's quite interesting now approach with all the geopolitical situation, yes? So when before we had in one country like a production hub, and now I think we will be having more productions in uh, diversified uh, locations, yes? That's absolutely the arrival model. So in our DNA is this localized production model utilizing local talent, mm -hmm. designing the vehicle for that region, the bus for that, that region, for example, the last mile delivery van for that region, um, close to market. So we can reduce uh, CO2 from logistics operations. We have you know, smaller supply chains. It's a much more sustainable, much more mm -hmm. equitable way of producing electric vehicles. We are discussing now with uh, Euro Electric, uh, with Bruce, with uh, the team about uh, having closer relationship with the clean tech industry leaders yes because uh, what we also believe in our club that uh, from the beginning we never should fight against each other but it's better to come together to exchange ideas and to work together yes to make the transformation so do you think it's a great idea I think so because uh, we can't compete as long as the uh, demand is times more than we can offer all together at the moment so that uh, I think up to the moment when we are really having a global competition, it takes time. Mm -hmm. Today, uh, we uh, need to increase our investments to fasten the speed because uh, so far demand is growing faster than the uh, investments to the renewables. Mm -hmm. So if we will not uh, fasten up, then actually uh, we have to cover it with the fossil still. There is not much to compete, but work together to overcome the challenge. Right, so it is very important. The power sector is demonstrating that we have the tools, we have the solution for the crisis and working together, aligning our positions, showing that the transition is good for everyone. We are ready to be 100% renewable in a quite short period of time. Fit for 55 is not, a, is not a headline, it's a concrete project and we are part of it. To me it's a no-brainer that together we are stronger, I believe, in teams doing good things, pooling diverse minds in order to, to come up with better solutions. I think that is true in the small sense, in the team uh, set, as it is in, in, in larger, in a corporation or in a society. Um, uh, and as we have seen now, you know, a, a, a crisis that hits us, brings us closer together and maybe catalyzes again um, uh, the power that, that together we, um, we get it done. I fully believe in that, that together we are stronger and I fully believe that with us we are better charged. Uh, we discussed about the power of DNA, yes? and human-to-human -human relationship. And how important this relationship is in your work? Well, my CEO, we had a series of meetings over the last couple of days, you know, here at the Commission, with customers, mm -hmm. uh, with some of the sector associations, and the one thing he always says is, uh, people buy from people, mm -hmm. right? So it's a very much a relationship business. It's not two companies buying or working together, it's people working together. So that human interaction, the commonality of DNA, as you say, uh, it's a nice phrase, um, I think is critical to make this transformation of Thank you so much, uh, Al Karim. That was uh, Clean Tech Business Club together with Euroelectric at their awards winning power summit. Thumbs up for the utilities, for Clean Tech, and for the awards transformation into a positive direction.